Okay, I'm going to do a quick demo of our new defect trend chart and our upgraded uh, defects by priority, defects by state chart. These were released into our on-demand product on uh, July 16th, 2011. Uh, they'll go into our on-premise product at a later date to be determined. So I'm going to start off by showing you how uh, at least one of the charts looks from the reports tab. So I'm in the reports tab in Rally, and I can scroll down here um, and see we've got here uh, an older release defects trend chart that's been in the product for a while. Defects by priority and defects by state have also been in the product for a while, but they've been upgraded this past weekend. And then this defect trend chart is very similar to the release defect trend, but it's not tied to just releases. This helps us out in situations uh, for Kanban, but it also has a lot more flexibility than the old release chart that helps us out even if you're not doing Kanban. So I'm going to demo that first here now. Okay, and there it is. So let me go over this real quickly with you. If you're familiar with the release defect trend, this will just be review. So we have three series on this chart. The red series here is uh, cumulative activated. These are defects that have been opened, be defects that have been created, entered into the system. Uh, the green series is the cumulative terminated. And if these two are tracking exactly together, then you're closing them as fast as you're terminating them. When they separate, when they like this, that means that you're opening them faster than you're, you're closing them. This line, the black series here, is the cumulative total active. So, or actually the moment in time total active, I should say. Um, so the difference between this series and this series is represented in this, in this chart over here, although the scale is very different. So um, this scale here is relative to a starting point, whereas this scale over here is absolute. So there's 150 defects total in the system, uh, roughly, for this. And over the course of this time frame, this is the last 30 days, it's the default, uh, it's gone up by a total of six defects in total. It's gone up a little bit, it came back down a little bit. Um, and this is the default chart. This is very similar to the way the release defect trend um, charts. It's hard-coded to, to only go back 30 days. And from the reports tab, this is the only option you have. There's no, there's no selection options for that. We're adding all of our new functionality with new flexibility to reports, but we're adding them on the dashboard. So I'm going to go demo that now. Here. And I wanted to explain quickly why we're adding the new functionality mostly on the dashboard and not in the main uh, re re reports tab. The, the primary reason for that is that uh, with the new charts we're adding a lot more flexibility. There's a lot more parameters as you'll see here in a second. Um, and the reports tab has two problems with that. One is that there's not enough real estate. The way the, the page is designed there's just a single bar at the top that allows us to add um, new parameters. And so uh, quickly you run out of space as, as you'll see in a second here. The other reason is that there's no facility for saving them over on the reports tab. So if you're configuring a report that's uh, got a lot of settings, you, wanna, you, you don't want to have to remember what those settings were the next time you come back to look for the same report. Uh, by putting them on the, the dashboard though, those settings are saved with that particular dashboard panel. So that's, uh, that's the main reason for it. The other reason is that we're actually shifting our UI to be more dashboard and panel centric. Um, the new um, iteration status page that's under development right now is going to be configured and created essentially as a set of panels so that you can, you can change things around uh, as the way you want. Put a different graph up there than the one that is by default up there. Uh, see it in a board view as opposed to a grid view. Those are the sorts of things that we're going to allow you to do. And this allows you to design your own dashboards. Right now, the dashboard panels have been configured that way for a while, been set up that way for a while. But we're just taking advantage of that capability. So to add a, um, a, a new report to the dashboard panel, we'll click on Add Panel here. And you see this is the list of all the panels in the, the dashboard. And we're going to click on this Defect Trend one and click Add. And you'll see here the settings panel for this comes up. And it's uh, too big for me to show on one screen here. I can scroll down a little bit and you can see a little more of it. But even then, I have to scroll a little more for you to see the whole thing. So we're going to add this defect trend chart. And we're going to change the, the date range. This is one of the features of the new charts that we've, 
we've uh, been adding. This is true for the two charts we added recently for Kanban support, lead slash cycle time, as well as throughput, and it's true for all three reports today, the new defect trend chart, as well as the defects by state and defects by priority chart. They all have this date range functionality. Um, so we're going to go back 19 months here. So you can specify not only days, weeks, but you can specify months. And the reason I'm going back 19 months is that's actually the max that you can go back and get real data uh, from the system. Actually, I'm going to go back 18 months to demonstrate something to you. Um, 18 months is, is the exact point where we started co collecting this data. And I'm going to leave the, the rest of these settings uh, the same and just click on Save here. We're going to see the same report we saw over on the Reports tab, except instead of going back 30 days, we're going to go back um, uh, 18 months. Let me, let me point out a couple things to you here. So this, these first two points on the graph are actually the delta from this month, January of 2010, and the prior month. So if we had shown 19 months, you'd see these, these both at zero because we hadn't started data collection there. But in the month of January, from December 31st to January 30th, 2010, the, there were roughly 75 defects added to the system uh, for, the, for, for this. And roughly, I don't know, about 10 of them were closed looking at this. And you can see the 75 if you go over here. This is uh, 70, so it looks like it's more like a little like 72. So this first point, 71, there we go. If you hover over it, you get the information. This first point is the difference between December, or January 30th, 2010 and December 31st, 2009. So that trend that we saw over on the 30 days one is true even going back a full 18 months. The, you tend to, we tend to be adding more defects to the system than we are closing them. And this overall cumulative total active uh, keeps climbing. So here we're going to do a little bit of exploratory data analysis. So I've put up a defects by priority report here and I've gone back 19 months that sort of demonstrates that we had no data past January 2010. Uh, and I'm trying to do this, I'm looking at this to try to figure out why we kept increasing the defects. Maybe poke, drill down a little more information. So if you look at this here, our um, the defects that I'm hovering over here are uh, the low priority defects, the P4s. And the ones here are the normal priority defects, the P3s. And these are the P2s. And these are the P1s. So it looks like most of the growth here was actually in the P3s. And that's the only one that's growing. Let's see if we can test that theory a little bit here. Sure enough, if I just display the defects by priority chart with just P1s and P2s, you can see that they're actually going down over time, not going up over time. So it's just P3s, maybe P4s as well, but you can, uh, we, when we looked at the other graph, they didn't look like they were going up. It's just P3s that are growing. So let's, um, let's, let's poke at this a little bit and see how we're doing with P1s and P2s uh, over time. So this is the defect trend chart again. But now I've chosen to just display P1s and P2s. So you can see here, this is a much nicer looking curve. The, the green line is actually getting ahead of the red line um, in all but a few places. And the overall uh, a number of P1s and P2s is coming down dramatically over the course of uh, these 18 months or so. So this is a nice trend. Another thing that's really interesting here, and it's, it looks fairly subtle on this graph, but it's actually more dramatic than that, is that the slope of the line, the red line, the line that says defects are being created or added to the system or found by customers, um, this slope is roughly about you know one to one. That's about 45 degree up. But over here, it's much more shallow. It looks like a, a gradual bending of the curve, but this is a very dramatic difference. We're adding a lot fewer P1s and P2s to the system over here than we were over here. And, and we can poke at that a little bit and, and get a little bit of understanding of that and, and, and validate that in a couple other ways here in a second. One more thing I want to show you here, though, is that this jump right here in June of 2010 is pretty steep. So it, I can see and look at a graph like this and then ask the question, well, why did that happen? 
Well, I go look at uh, what happened during that time frame and I realize that was the time when we redefined our P2s to include all uncaught exceptions. Pre prior to that, they didn't have to be considered P2s, it was a judgment call. But during June of, of 2010, we decided to relabel all uncaught exceptions as P2s. That's where that big, big jump co comes from. So let's poke at this a little bit longer and see, uh, see how uh, this changing of the, the, the number of defects that are being injected, P1s and P2s, into the system varies over time. I showed you this graph a, a minute ago, um, so you can see that it's coming down, how they're being added. Um, but I think I can make this a little more dramatic by looking at it with a different time scale. So the, the trend looks even more obvious when you switch to a quarterly time scale. So I've changed the, the x-axis here to quarters, and you can see it, it coming down. I'm wondering um, if these are way, the way defects are being entered into the system, this is the rate. Um, I should see defects being closed in a similar fashion. If I could actually poke at that with the throughput charts. Let's take a look at that then. So here's the throughput chart for the same time frame, also broken down by quarters. And again, you can see that we're working on fewer and fewer defects over time. Just to compare here, I'll slide up and down a couple times real quick for you. What else can we, we learn? So I've shown you the defect trend and the defects by priority charts, and now I'm displaying the defects by state chart. This is the third one uh, that's being released, either new or updated this round. And this shows you the change in what defects are in what state over time. Um, and this is uh, just a default chart, except I've changed the x-axis going back 19 months. Um, and one of the things that uh, you can do in these charts is you can hover over a, a given section. I didn't demonstrate this. Uh, for the defects by priority chart, and it'll tell you what that is. So this is the open state. And if I hover over this, this is the submitted state. And if I hover over this, um, this is the verifying state. So you can, without a legend on these dashboards, we do that for space reasons, you can still get the, the information you want. Um, but one of the things I, I noticed about this is that this verifying, the submitted state, um, you, it seems to be staying in longer. And you can think of this very similar to a cumulative flow chart. So this band on the cumulative flow chart is getting wider uh, later, but it was this, these bands were wider earlier in the fixed state. So we seem to be less good about closing things out, about accepting defects earlier on, and now we seem to be less good about triaging them. So let's poke at this a little more by getting rid of this open state and just so it turns out I didn't need to actually get rid of this open state in order to uh, drill down and get the scale to the point where I could actually get some information out of this. All I really needed to do was to get rid of the P3s um, and just look at the P1s and P2s. And the pattern does come, come out that I looked like I could see before. So you see that earlier on, older, older uh, months, the items stayed in the fixed and verifying states for longer periods of time. So we were good at, at getting them into an open state, get them started to be worked on, but they took longer to validate and get approved by the, the POs. Now later in life, they tend to stay in this uh, triage mode a little bit longer, um, although we do tend to spend less time um, in the, in the um, uh, validation and, and uh, acceptance type states. Uh, so I don't know if this is a retro item, I don't know if there's something we should do about this, but it is an interesting trend that may or may not have an impact on what you want to do. So I'm done with my exploratory data analysis. Uh, I've learned a lot about trends, I've maybe identified some items that would give me some insight into what things helped improve my team, why is the trend going so that we're we're uh, injecting fewer defects. That's a very interesting question to answer. Maybe the team would help me answer that. Um, so I'm done with exploratory data analysis, uh, but I, that's one purpose of, uh, for defects, but driving behavior is another purpose for defects. So I want to put a few charts permanently on my dashboard. I've chosen to use the defect trend chart looking back over weeks. I can track that at the granularity of about weeks. And the defects by priority chart looking back 30 days. And days is interesting here too because um, when I see a P1, I can see how long it stays on the board. This P1 stayed on the board for two days, so I know we're, we're resolving those pretty quickly. And I like to see that. Um, so there you have it. That's uh, my demonstration of the new charts. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a ring.